Hi, I'm Dr. Liz Hale, marriage and family therapist with husbandandwife.com. We have one goal, and that is to help you form and sustain a healthy, lasting, loving marriage. Conflicts, challenges, disagreements, and difficulties, they are inevitable in every marriage. As a matter of fact, every marriage has at least 10 irreconcilable differences. So how can you make your disagreements work for you? According to some impressive marital research, it's not resolving our differences that make the difference, it's managing them that determines marital success. Learning how to manage differences respectfully is part of making a good marriage great. Over 35 years of marital research by Dr. John Gottman from the University of Washington comes a prediction with more than a 90% accuracy rate of what's going to happen to a relationship over a three-year period. So he can predict divorce with over 90% accuracy, if you can believe it. In a national telephone survey, the two issues couples most frequently reported arguing about were, can you guess, money and children. No big surprise, right? Other common differences were in-law and extended family involvement, equitable balance between home and work, and fulfilling sexual intimacy. Now just keep in mind a few concepts. Differences are not deficiencies. Embrace them. Don't try to eliminate them or we're apt to eliminate our mutual love and respect. Have fun with them. Get curious, not furious about your mate's different viewpoints. Conflict and intimacy go hand in hand. Don't miss out on closeness by avoiding conflict. It's going to come back to bite you. Prevent and eliminate the negative. Marriage is not for getting our needs met. It's for learning how to love, for learning how to become more refined. Let go of the dirty dishes left in the sink. <laughs> they made it to the sink, right? Most of life is rather boring and tasks are repetitive and mundane. When you're bored to tears, rejoice. It means that nothing terribly major has just happened. Leave the tears for the truly tough times. Start with respect and affection. The most important part of a discussion is the first three minutes. More than 96% of the time, the way it starts determines how it will go. You can either become gridlocked within your perpetual issues or our dialogues can contain relationship building laughter, connection, and affection. Set the stage for discussion by bringing up issues calmly, gently. You know, it's fine to complain, but don't blame. Speak for yourself. Use I statements. You could say, you know, I felt hurt when you left me alone at the party. Instead of, you are such a selfish jerk. You flirted with everyone in that room but me. Speak privately, appreciatively, and politely. And if you're the listening party, listen with your heart and your head. Paraphrase so your partner knows that you get it. You know, say, oh gosh, I really let you down at the party. I hurt you by not being more attentive and loving. I am so sorry. Honor their dreams. I worked with a couple recently where the husband was going to go to work for a family member in a business he really wasn't that crazy about, just to please his wife who was complaining because she was tired of having her husband pursue his dream of music and not making any money at it. It's absolutely crucial that you invest in your partner's dream. So do whatever you can to support, acknowledge, and make those dreams come true. You can only imagine what happened with this couple when this wife, lovingly in session, turned to her husband and said, all right, go back to your studio and make it happen, baby. I believe in you. And you know what? He did, and he was successful. The bottom line is embrace your differences. Don't eliminate them. Get curious, not furious, at what makes your partner think and feel the way they do.